I will talk in this presentation about the uh, epidemiologic situation of above uh, rise in Latin America. Uh, my name is Julio Croda. I'm, I'm a professor at, at Federal University of Mato Grosso do Sul and researcher at Oswaldo Cruz Foundation. I, I, I'm also professor at the AU School of Public Health. Uh, arbovirus, especially in, uh, in Latin America, it's uh, wide distributed. And uh, you can see in this slide that, uh, especially the, the three and four more, in, three urban arboviruses and four in mo most important arboviruses that occur in this region. You can say that dengue it's, uh, had a huge impact, the chikungunya, Zika, and yellow fever. And you can show the distribution of this disease uh, in, in other countries of this region. You can see that Brazil has the majority of this arbovirus and, and uh, it's contributes for uh, a large number of uh, arboviruses cases in these regions. Here is the burn it's, uh, of this disease, especially in, in the Americas, and uh, when you look at the data, the majority of the cases occur in Brazil, but you can look during the time, the increase of the dengue cases uh, between the, the 2012 and 2016, and uh, the cumulative cases, more than 10,000 million of cases, chikungunya, more than 2 million cases, and Zika, more than 500 cases. Uh, and, and this continue to occur uh, in, in, the, in the more recent years too, especially for dengue and chikungunya. Here you can see uh, the same numbers, but uh, with Zoom in Brazil, that's responsible for uh, the majority of cases, especially when you talk with uh, Zika cases, chikungunya cases, and uh, dengue also, you see a lot of cases that occur during the time in Brazil with dif different sorotypes, with different epidemic years. And, uh, and more recently, in 2016, the introduction of Zika and, and, uh, and uh, chikungunya uh, in the same time. It's, uh, it's good to know that the you need to have an integrated management strategy for arboviruses because the vector is similar in the region. And the, the main uh, virus involved in, in this disease, it's a flav flavavirus, it's a dengue, sorotype 1 to 4, Zika, yellow fever, St. Louis, uh, and uh, you have alpha virus, chikungunya and mayaru, and, uh, Muniadai, it's a Oropush virus, and you need to do uh, a very integrated uh, uh, strategy to deal with the arbovirus, especially in Latin America. And a combination of vector control and understanding the epidemiologic situation, have a good uh, laboratory support. And, and uh, good clinical management of this case. Here is the distribution of uh, arbovirus vector, Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. It's the, the main vector of the arbovirus. And you can look in the Latin America, it's very frequent, especially in, a, in, a, in the South uh, of uh, South America. Uh, but uh, you have this vector also in Africa, India, and, and South Pacific, it's, it's uh, well distributed in worldwide. And uh, when you look at the, especially in uh, Latin America, like Aedes aegypti, the vector of uh, dengue disease, it's distributed to the, in the Americas, only Canada and Chile are, are free of dengue. In Uruguay, uh, has no dengue fever, but have Aedes aegypti. Talk a little bit about dengue disease. Uh, the history of dengue in the America region, it's uh, quite old. Uh, you have, hist uh, have uh, some 
report of the first cases of dengue-like epidemic in Martinique, Chic, Martinica, and Guadalupe in the 16th, and Panama also too. And uh, in the uh, early 19th, uh, have a plan leader by Paho uh, to eradicate Aedes aegypti in, in the entire region, especially because the yellow fever disease. And this occurred during the time. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, well controlled uh, in, in the until early 17th. And after that, you have a infestation of Aedes aegypti in the region, especially <coughs> this occur <coughs> between uh, the 17th and 19th, and this spread the dengue fever uh, to entire region, the, the beginning with the Caribbean, and after that, the north of South America, Venezuela, and uh, this have a huge impact in Brazil since uh, 19th and 2000. This uh, increase in, in the dispersion of, uh, of Aedes aegypti led to Brazil have been a leader in the region of the number of the cases and the deaths. And uh, also circulated the four different sorotypes. And uh, between 2000 and 2007, you have more than 4 million of cases notifying the America and the, the most uh, affected sub-region was South America. And you can look specifically in Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, Paraguay, and Venezuela. This is when you look in this site, uh, the dengue alert in the last three months, you can continue to, to, to see that the region, the, the South America, is, uh, have a huge impact of the disease, continues to have a huge impact of the disease. And um, several cases continue to report in these areas. Nowadays, you, you have more than uh, 5,000 million people in the America that are at risk of dengue. Dengue, dengue incidents have increased in America over the past four decades. And, uh, and from 1.5 million cumulative cases in the 80s to more than uh, 60 million cases uh, in uh, 2010, 2020. And uh, in 2013, you have a huge epidemic year in the America, more than 2 million cases, and the incidence is for more than 400,000, 400, and have more than 35,000 severe cases, more than 1,000 of deaths, especially in, in the Americas, and especially in Latin America. And uh, in 2009, you have more than three uh, million cases and more than 28,000 uh, severe cases and more than 1,000 deaths. It's a huge impact. The dengue it's, it's, it's the, the major arborosis in the region, have a huge impact and uh, a lot of deaths per year. Uh, nowadays, the four dengue sorotypes, dengue one, two, three, and four, circulate through America and Latin America. And uh, in, in some countries, this occur in the same time, in like, uh, the, the example is Brazil, you have the circulation of the four sorotypes in the same year. And um, the, the problem with this, because the follow of infection with one sorotype, the subsequent uh, infection with a different sorotypes in, increase a person's risk of severe de dengue and deaths. And this occurred during the time you see year by year the increase of the deaths in the Latin America. Uh, this is it's the, the data of PAHO, especially for America region, but the major American region is related to Latin America. And you can see the in this uh, in the year 2020, 
you have more than 2 million cases, more than uh, 1 million confirmed cases, more than 5,000 severe cases, and close to 1,000 deaths. And uh, when you do a zoom in this, especially in the this region, you can see you can see that South Carolina, it's it's uh, South America, it's responsible for more than a half of the number of the cases, uh, and a uh, uh, expressive number of severe uh, dengue, and uh, and the majority, great majority of the deaths. More than a half, uh, uh, more than 78% of the deaths that occur in, in the Latin America occur in the South Corn, especially in Brazil. When you look, when you look at the case fatality rate in, in the America region, you can see Latin and Caribbean, it's the high. Uh, but you can see uh, in the South Corn some lethality too. This is the dengue incidence rates. You can look at this region, the South region, especially Brazil, Paraguay, uh, Uruguay, Argentina, in, in the year of 2020, you have a lot of cases. And you can look at the dengue mortality by population. You can see uh, these countries is also have uh, the majority of the deaths related to the dengue fever. As you already told, you have a different uh, uh, arbovirus that circulate during the time. And this uh, uh, beginning in 2000 with a few uh, sorotypes, but uh, uh, during the time, like you, you can see that the majority of the country have a core circulation of the four sorotypes. And, and uh, this uh, it's uh, very impressed and led the, uh, to us uh, a very uh, uh, precaution, especially because the increase of the deaths because the, the infection with different sorotypes. This is evolution of the different sorotypes uh, during the time you can see in, in the Nine, 90s, uh, the majority it's it's dengue one uh, in, in the in the uh, Brazil and uh, and dengue two, and after that in Brazil you have the increase of dengue three, especially dengue three three in 2005, and 2020 you have all the serotypes, especially in Brazil, the country that contribute but to the majority of the case. More recently, when you compare the more, the more recent, the last two years, you can see that the, the 2019, you had a, a peak of a dengue cases, about 100 cases, not five. And uh, in 2020, this, uh, it's less than the 2019. Uh, this decrease uh, is it, it's under investigated. You not uh, uh, understand if it's a true decrease in, in the incidence in the number of the cases, or uh, is the impact of a COVID-19 pandemic in the case reported in the case notification, especially in the primary care units. When you compare the incidence among the, the first semester and the second semester, yeah, you, you can look at this difference. Uh, after uh, the mid of the year, you have a, a huge decrease in, in the incidence of dengue disease. Uh, this is uh, the same time that you had a huge impact of COVID-19 pandemic in Brazil. And uh, you can see in, in the first semester, the majority of the cases, it, it's concentrated in the Middle West, especially Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sul, in part of uh, Paraná State and, and São Paulo State, uh, in the Northeast. Uh, uh, and uh, you have uh, uh, some cases too, especially in the first, first uh, semester of the year 2020. 
this is the death by dengue in 2020. You can see the same panel, the majority of, of the deaths uh, was concentrated in, in the Middle West region, in the Sao Paulo border, in Paraná border. Uh, uh, now I talk a little bit about the chikungunya and the impact of the, these other arbor viruses in the region. You can see chikungunya between 2005 and 2011 have more than 2 million cases, but uh, not arriving in, in Latin America. You have some report, uh, uh, some outbreaks uh, occur, especially in the Africa uh, and the South, South, South Asian. And after that, they have increased of the, the outbreaks in the Africa and, and the South Asia. Uh, and uh, after that, after this time, after 2011, uh, especially his uh, discretion of uh, a very good discretion that occur in uh, uh, Union is Island in 2005-2006 that uh, increased the number of deaths, especially in the older, especially in patients with comorbidity. The chikungunya uh, become more frequently in the, the Asian uh, area. And this, uh, it's, uh, this is the source of the, the distribution of this disease for uh, Latin America. Uh, after I arrived here in 2013, uh, you have an um, increase of the number of the cases, especially, especially in, in the in, in, in Latin Caribbean. And uh, after that, uh, Central America and uh, in Brazil. Brazil become an epicentric of, uh, of uh, chikungunya in Latin America, with uh, with the uh, Dominic, Dominic Republic, is the two countries that have more uh, uh, cases of chikungunya uh, in in the region, and uh, this begin in in Dominican Republic, and after that Brazil, and uh, nowadays this Brazil represents the majority of the cases reported in the region. Uh, you, you can see in this map that uh, uh, between 2013 2017, uh, the, the spread of the chikungunya began in, in Dominican Republic and in Brazil, and Brazil become, a, a, become a very quickly the leader of the number of the cases, and this continues until now. Uh, in 2020, the Paro reported. Uh, show that the more than uh, uh, 19% of the chikungunya cases occur in Brazil, and uh, in the second, Bolivia and Guatemala, Paraguay, with small numbers of the cases reported. And this is the incidence per 100,000. And this incidence show that the, the majority of cases was concentrated in Brazil. Brazil become the epicenter of chikungunya in this in the region. And this uh, more recent data compared to 2019-2020. And you can see this comparison show that in 2020, you have a decrease of chikungunya cases reported. Uh, and uh, when you compare the first and the second semester of the year, here you see the same pattern, different of the dengue, uh, that you, you see a decrease of the reporter, but here you see the same pattern. You have a lot of cases concentrated in the Northeast, but especially in one state, state of Bahia, the countryside of Bahia, uh, reported the majority of the cases that occur in Brazil uh, in uh, 2020, uh, you have uh, some deaths. The death is it's it's also occur in the northeast of Brazil, and especially in in the Bahia state. 
and uh, she con the, ma the majority of the cases and the majority of the deaths uh, in 2020 occur uh, in the Bay State. You can say that in the Latin America is the state that you need to uh, intervene, especially try to, to have a more uh, vector control, especially in the countryside of Bahia. Zika virus, uh, it's a uh, other arbovirus that began in Uganda in, in 1947, spread to Africa and become restricted to Africa until ages. And after that, spread, spread to Asia, to Asia uh, uh, French Polynesia, and by uh, to French Polynesia, this uh, go to Brazil and the entire Latin America and arriving in the uh, in, uh, USA to the Texas in 2016. This is the history of Zika and the majority of the history of Zika is related to this state that called Pernambuco. Pernambuco has a, a huge outbreak of a, of a uh, exanthemic disease in, uh, in 2015. And uh, nobody knows what this disease Have some uh, research, especially in Bahia and, uh, and uh, Pernambuco, that uh, do a randomic uh, test for this uh, exanthemic fever and identify a, a, a virus that calls Zika. And uh, in, during this time, it have a, a few impact in, in, in the uh, related to the clinic outcomes. Uh, the majority of the cases in, in uh, 2050 was confirmed by cl clinical diagnosis. They didn't have a, a huge investment to lab confirmation. But this, but this uh, history changed especially uh, in the end of 2015, when uh, 90 months after this huge outbreak that began in the early, in the first semester of 2015, and after 90 months, you see a increase of the, the, the number of, a, of a young children, newborn that, uh, that have a, a microcephaly, and uh, congenital uh, Zika, Zika syndrome. And this, uh, this occurred this, this, with this lag of time of nine months. And during the time that you have this increase of the, the newborn with uh, microcephaly, you have the other disease, like you continue to have dengue, continue to have chikungunya in the same region. And then uh, these are, these are a tragedy that occurred in, in this time. And after that, before 2016, we have a huge decrease in the number of the crazy report and, and the, also uh, the Zika case report decrease, the microcephalia decrease. And this is a outbreak very concentrated in, uh, in the beginning of the uh, 2015 and the microcephaly in, in the end of 2015. Uh, here is a, during the outbreak, the distribution of a congenital uh, Zika syndrome. You can see the majority of the cases from Northwest, as you show nowadays, the majority of Chikungunya also is from no Northwest. And uh, you can see in 2014, 2015, uh, the majority of a uh, case of Zika case was concentrated in Pernambuco. And, uh, and after that, Sergipe and Bahia is the three uh, most important states that have more cases of uh, congenital Zika syndrome. And uh, as you know, this is a, a, a syndrome that was identified in Brazil, and you have a good data that showed that this syndrome was associated with, with previous Zika infections. This is, uh, have several studies, case control studies, courts studies, and, and uh, 
a laboratory studies that show that uh, this association with Zika with microcephaly and uh, the impact of the newborn and the impact of develop neurological development of newborns. More recent data compa comparing uh, 2019 and 2020, you have this decrease of the number of the cases, as I, I said, that the majority of the cases occur between 2015 and 2016. Nowadays, you have a few cases, more than less than 1,000 cases notified reported to, to CINA, uh, the National Report uh, Notify System. And uh, the, the, when we compare the 2019 and 2020, the part is similar. We have this uh, peak, it's close to April. And, and uh, this occurred in 2019 and 2020, like chikungunya, but different to dengue disease. Uh, when you com compare the incidence among the first and the second semester of 2020, you, you see that they have a few cases, especially in the first semester, uh, where you have more cases. And concentrated in Bahia, the same state that have the majority of the case chikungunya, also in the same period, in some cases in Mato Grosso, the Midwest state. Here, the, the, the uh, total number of uh, uh, Zika congenital syndrome uh, since uh, uh, 2015 and 2016, where the majority of the cases occur, and after that, we have a decrease of the, this report during the time. And the last year, 2020, is the year that have less uh, notification of uh, uh, Zika congenital syndrome. And uh, the majority of, of the report occur in, in uh, newborns. And uh, the majority of cases difficult to confirm, confirm because it's the... the uh, the PCR, uh, it's very poor to detect after uh, the delivery, the disease in this newborn. And uh, the majority is closed by clinical investigation and uh, prior history of symptomatic uh, exanthema uh, fever disease. Here is the distribution uh, during the time you can see uh, uh, between 2015 and 2019, the majority of congenital Zika syndrome was concentrated in the Northeast, especially in this, this uh, three states, Pernambuco, Sergipe, and Bahia. And uh, when you look at 2020, uh, you have a decrease in the number of, uh, of uh, notification, and, uh, but still have some cases and uh, it's dis distributed in the entire country, but have more cases, continue to have more cases in, in the uh, Northwest region. You can see in this graph that uh, the North, you have uh, less than uh, 50 uh, notification of uh, Zika con congenic syndrome. But the, the, the majority, 80%, more than 80% of the this report occur in the Northwest. The last one about, about virus disease that occur in Brazil and have an uh, impact in the entire region, the entire Latin America, it's yellow fever. Yellow fever is one disease that's more, the majority of the cases was concentrated in Brazil, and I will talk more about Brazil because this uh, region. Here is, is the, the history, recent history of extra Amazonic yellow fever. The, the past, uh, the yellow fever, it's uh, concentrated in the uh, Amazonic region related with the uh, summer episode, summer, summer, cases that occur the people that is not vaccinated and go to the forest. Nowadays, you have this movement that begin to occur in the Middle East in, in uh, uh, 2014, 2015. Uh, this, uh, in, and after the, the, 
this increase the number of the cases uh, in Goiás. Goiás become a, a, a epicenter of the disease between 2014 2016. After that, between 2016 2017, they, the Minas Gerais become the, the, the epicenter of the, the yellow fever in Brazil, have a, a lot of cases. And after that, you have a Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo State, the, the Southeast region become an a important region. A, a lot of deaths occur in this region during the time. And, and nowadays you have a, a two states that have a, uh, some uh, have cases of yellow fever, especially in the south of Brazil, Paraná and Santa Catarina now become the leader of the number of uh, uh, monkeys infected and, uh, and uh, human uh, disease reported. Here is, is the idea of this. You, you have uh, in the past in the Ministry of Health uh, in partnership with Adriano Pinte from São Paulo, Suzanne São Paulo, develop a predictive model of yellow fever, how uh, this yellow fever, uh, the dispersion of this, uh, this virus, especially related to the green areas, the, the, the monkeys and how they travel in this uh, region, and they develop uh, this model in the past. The, the yellow fever big uh, go to the um, uh, southwest, uh, some state of southwest, like Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, to the south, uh, especially Santa Catarina, Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul. This is the model that developed. And when you look at the more recent data, that's, this is occur, especially in Santa Catarina. They, they go from uh, the sea to the countryside, to the border of Brazil, especially the region of uh, have a border with, Para, with Paraguay and Argentina, close to Paraná. You, uh, here is the distribution of... Uh, of human case, monkey cases and human cases of yellow fever, uh, you not uh, reported in 2020 and 2021 um, any cases of human cases, but you report several monkeys that developed the disease and was confirmed that it is a yellow fever, uh, especially in this uh, uh, area of Santa Catarina in the south. And uh, now you have some cases in the Goiás, is the first state that have an extra Amazon uh, yellow fever in the past, in 2015. Uh, during these two years, you, you have uh, uh, more than 500 cases suspect, uh, uh, infected monkeys, you have a good uh, animal surveillance, uh, zoonotic disease, uh, surveillance and uh, in these more than 500 uh, animals that was investi investigated, uh, the Ministry of Health confirmed uh, 30, 37 infection, especially uh, during the uh, October and December. Now uh, you just begin the seasonal period and you can see the confirmation of course, especially in the Santa Catarina state, in, in some uh, in, in Goiás state, you needed to uh, have a more uh, effort to have better cover of uh, yellow fever vaccination in this, at least in these two states that I already know that have a yellow fever circulation in the animals, and uh, you need to improve the cover to prevent uh, the yellow fever disease in, in, in human. And uh, this is a uh, work that done by uh, door by door, try to uh, uh, to check the the vaccination card and uh, and uh, do a proactive vaccination in this region, especially in the region that was detected uh, infected animal. Until now, you don't have any, any uh, human confirmed yellow fever case in Brazil, this is very good. 
this uh, in the past we have uh, during the same time more cases of yellow fever confirmation. You're not sure if you have a decrease in the surveillance, especially because of the COVID-19 pandemic. You need to check this data uh, in the system during the time. And I would like to thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, here you can see my contacts. If you have any doubt about this lecture, you can contact me by email.